2007, 2008, 2009, mm -hmm. you know, now it's all about social media. Mm -hmm. uh, how has that changed for you? Uh, how have you adapted to the social media aspect? It's different. Um, you know, coming from Fort Myers, man, back in the days, if somebody came around you with a camera, you thought it was the police. <laughs> 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 yeah. Anytime anybody came around, you know, bent the corner with a camera with us, you know, we threw our elbows up and out because we weren't trying to be in front of that. Yeah. You know, but it's so, it's so different now. I'm never going to allow myself to get that caught up in the new change that I violate my principles. Um, it's cool with, with allowing people to be able to connect with you, um, people to be able to follow you and get inside your world a little bit. Yeah. Um, that's cool about you know Twitter and, and, and Instagram and Facebooks and all that, but you will never catch me, um, I guess, when I say violate my principles, just basically doing the things that I know moves. Um, the internet, like I, I ain't one of them dudes. It's, it's easy. You, you know, you want to get that attention. You ain't gotta do them to say some, say say somebody's name that people care about. It's something crazy. Yeah. So for me, I, I it's important for me to just stand on the things that I came in there on. Man, I, I want to stand on being able to make great music, being one of them artists that everybody can touch, being one of them artists that people feel a part of their situation just because it's organic. Um, I ain't never gonna gimmick you. Yeah. You know. So for me, I think a lot of times that's that's the thing for me. Um, that can be a little bit hard sometimes because, you know, the label will tell you, hey man, you know, got to, you know, bring me in your house a little bit. But I ain't trying to bring you in my house just to make you feel like I'm balling and you ain't. Like I ain't trying to put you down. <laughs> like that's that's for me that's that's important for me. I was having this conversation with somebody the other day. It's like flying first class. Like I fly it only to show other people that my people belong here too. Like I, I only fly first class so I can represent my people being in first class. Mm -hmm. If you ever sat in first class, which I know everybody in this room probably have, but you know, a lot of time when you see people get on the plane and you and you in first class, they let you on first. People put their head down when they walk past you mm. because they just feel like you know they're not as worldly as you because they're in the back of the plane. They ticket could have cost them more than mine, depending on if they got it at the last minute or not. Yeah. You know, but for me. I'm so so I'm I'm so conscious of that. I don't even even when I'm flying first class, I don't get on the plane until last because I don't even want you to walk past me and feel like that. Dang, I never looked at it like that, dude. Yeah. I mean, you know. you've got curtains and all. They don't even let you look what's yeah. going on in first class. Yeah. a separate bathroom. You can't come up here with us, <laughs> sir. You gotta go back there to the back of the plane. Use mm -hmm. the bathroom. It, and that, that's what I said. I never looked at it like that, man. Yeah. You know. And you know, speaking about looking at something, you are a Florida boy. You Absolutely. know. All day, and um, you know, I ask everybody who comes in from Florida, and we've been talking about it, Trayvon Martin. You know, a lot of artists were boycotting the fact of performing in Florida right. because of the stand your law ground. I mean, um, it, it, it hit close to where y'all are at. Absolutely. You know, so what are your views? What, how do you feel about this gun violence in our um, communities, and what can we do to educate these people, our people, personally? See, that's that's the crazy part about it. That's what I feel like my job, my responsibility is. Get you look at it through our eyes. Yeah. I say our eyes. I ain't just saying the the black youth eyes. I'm saying anybody that come from the struggle. You know, you look at what's going on in Chicago. Um, that's you know, I think last time I checked, it was you know the highest murder rate, dude. Right. But yeah. it's, you know, it's 20, 30 people you know dying there a week, but it's not the forefront of national news because it's it's happening in the hood and it's happening in the ghetto. Mm -hmm. That same killing was happening downtown. You know, that'll be something that will stay on CNN every day. But I just feel like when it comes to the Trayvon Martin situation, um, it's about understanding us. I had a situation, I was traveling a couple weeks ago. We stopped somewhere outside of Tallahassee. We went into a gas station and the lady that was there, she was of a different race. And I can tell her vibe wasn't that friendly. But, you know, I walked in there, my pants was hanging off me. I had on a t-shirt. Like, I get that. Yeah. She could have had bad experiences with people like me too. Yeah. Um, but for me it was, you know, I guess not trying to, but I ended up breaking the ice with her. And she turned out to be an alright woman. Mm -hmm. But if I never broke the ice with her, I would have thought she was mean and she would have thought I was trouble. Yeah. 
But I feel like that was the same case with the Trayvon Zimmerman situation. He just assumed dude was another problem, like some of the problems he had ran into before. But for that particular person, if he would have got a chance and opportunity to meet dude, he probably could have changed his viewpoint um, on how he felt about his past relationships. And according to Trayvon, Trayvon might have had bad experiences too yeah. with his race. So for me, it's just about getting people through my music to understand why we do some of the things that we do. What we doing? 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 What we doing?